Bob Rowan and Jody Shiflett and uh, this UPS Foundation uh, great event. We're getting ready for Brad Remmers. And here he is getting ready and uh, Brad's got a great story to tell. I had a chance to talk with him and uh, this is his fifth year at the games. I'll wow, tell you what. Year. Uh, Where's Brad from? He's a Kansas Jayhawk, a Navy guy. Uh, he had his injuries uh, diving at first. I said, are you a SEAL? He goes, nope, just a diving accident. But uh, what, he's uh, his story I thought was very fascinating was he went to the St. Louis mini games and uh, that was his turn on and he thought it was going to be kind of a special Olympics thing and he wasn't really interested in going. And you can see the pride and the word special with a lot of times people with disabilities, they don't want to be classified. As uh, Josh Blue, the famous comedian says, yeah. there's Paralympics and certain things and there's special games. One is physical and one is mental. Right. And so, uh, very clear about that, that he, wanted, he went there, he had a great time. His soul wanted to come to Veteran Games, and he hasn't stopped coming since. Well, Brad is one of approximately 500 athletes that have come to the city this week, and this is day three of the slalom. And Brad, along with the other 80-odd uh, motorized wheelchairs who are here today, uh, are, are participating in this slalom course that was set up by uh, with help from UPS uh, volunteers and the officials that are assigned to this event from all across the country. Myself and uh, Abby LaCroix from the St. Louis area also uh, have spent uh, approximately two and a half hours setting up this course alone. That doesn't count the breakdown uh, time as well. So uh, we were here to about 10 o'clock last night and that was an early uh, uh, bedtime for us and we were here bright and early uh, just after six this morning to prepare for these athletes when we showed up we even found a couple that were here sneaking in some runs uh, uh -oh. before the staff That's showed up. That's a minus up. 10 points right there. <laughs> exactly but that just shows you how motivated these athletes are or they may have just had insomnia. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they were maybe they were chair walking. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway. we rushed those guys out of the way, and uh, you know, you see the athletes there wearing helmets for their own personal safety, uh, because it is possible to up in their chair, even though we make every effort to not make the course that difficult. In years past, with these motorized wheelchairs, we did have ramps that would allow them to catch mini air, if you will, and we stopped that. I'll pass it back to you, Rob. Uh, as uh, the gentleman gets started through the Brad. course very quickly through that first rear gate. Yeah, look at see what Brad. I have a feeling Brad's going to do pretty good. He looks like he has a, a lot of uh, control over there on his uh, chair. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because people don't understand about power chairs. And I happen to have the experience of a uh, founder of Xable. Uh, that, that's the reason why we're here. Uh, he was uh, diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, and so he had to grow up in, uh, in a chair. At, and uh, he always said, I want to have heroes in the, in the disability community like the Michael Jordans. And particularly in power soccer it's one, and power hockey are the two sports that these people can play besides doing the slalom. And it's really an incredible thing to see these guys, the kind of control that they can get. And they can kick a ball or they can hit a ball and move their chair. And look at, you can see right here, look at the work that he's doing. Beautifully, beautifully moving. That's the first cone he's knocked over. Right, and that cone will cost him just one second, so he shouldn't get too worried about that happening. Yeah, that's not bad. He's moving nicely through this. Brad's got a nice thing, and of the ones we watched, he's, he's definitely one of the best we've seen so far. And um, nice control there, and I hope that yes. he's going to consider, uh, uh, look, at he did a double there and uh, got to go back through. Right, a reverse gate there. I know... Some of these athletes have uh, motorized wheelchairs that actually go faster backwards than they go forwards because uh, I believe in what, in maybe some of the other sports such as soccer, uh, it's more important to uh, retreat, if you will. So they need to speed when they're going backwards. All right, he got through the door and uh, didn't knock over any of the yellow cones and uh, nice turns there. You can see, you know, if, if you're new to a power chair and you watch someone like this, it gives you the belief that you can do anything because look at how he has just maneuvered. That's, he just tipped that one. I mean, really incredible. What a great run for Brad yes. Rivers. I'm almost Fantastic. certain that that's, uh, no, that's the first place score at this point. I can't wow. say that it'll, it'll stand because we have, uh, I guess, about eight to ten other athletes to compete.
But that was fantastic. So uh, let's uh, let's take a break here and go back and get an interview with Brad, okay? And uh, you're, by the way, this is UPS Foundation. Thank you so much for putting on and sponsoring this event. Fantastic event. I agree. Thank you, UPS.